perfect. Okay, let me just jump into our slides. So as we get started this morning, I mentioned the session is Rich Internet Applications 101. So it is a very uh, introductory level view of Rich Internet Applications. Um, we will uh, be providing you with some uh, materials at the end for follow-up that will help give a little more information on everything that we've covered here today as well. Okay, so for the agenda today, we are going to be first looking at an introduction to Integration New Media, just a short information piece about who we are so you understand the context of what we're presenting today. We're going to look at rich internet applications, more of the what are they, why are they popular, and looking at what they really mean for developers and for marketers and the opportunities they present. So we'll be looking at that element. Then we'll look at the benefits of RIAs, so why should you be paying attention to them. Uh, we'll look at some examples and tie in some of the, the different um, benefits to the examples. And all of the examples will be from a variety of different industries and different applications. So we'll look at a good cross-section there. Then we'll talk about paths for moving forward. So if you really are interested in rich internet applications, where do you go from here and how do you get, get moving on that? Um, if we start with integration new media, um, we really have a long history of de delivering products and services that help organizations to uh, present and deliver rich content. Over the years, we've had a number of different clients in different industries, but the really key factor is all of them have dealt with highly formatted content in a really visual and searchable fashion. Um, we've developed applications for both the online and offline market, and uh, really have been involved quite heavily in rich internet applications in the last couple of years. So what is a rich internet application? Obviously, if you've signed up for the session and joined us today, this is something you're interested in or maybe know a little bit about. I see from the attendee list, uh, from the questions you answered when you signed up, there were a few of you that have already developed rich internet applications. So this may be uh, somewhat familiar to you, but some of the examples may be very interesting as we walk through it. Rich Internet applications are web applications that have many of the features and functionality of a traditional desktop application, but they're delivered over the web. So when we look at that definition, though, the key factor you want to keep in mind is application. So with an application, it's designed to deliver or to facilitate a task. So that's something you want to keep in mind when we're walking through the examples is, this is not a website, and this is not um, a web page, but it's an application with an end destination for the user. So that could be finding a product, that could be customizing a service, or you know playing a game. It, but it, the the feature there that you'll want to concentrate on is walking that user through the task. So what's really cool about RIAs is they combine the best of both worlds, the desktop and the connectivity of the internet. We'll look at that in a little more detail. Looking at where they fit into the ecosystem, it's good to take a look at where computing began and how we got to where we are today. Won't be a long history lesson, just a quick snapshot. When applications first started to develop, they were really mainframe solutions. There was nothing rich. They were really text-based interactions that were available to a small group of users in a local community. Um, then you know, the desktop started to come to fruition, desktop PCs started to become more popular, and applications took on a new form. The pendulum sort of swung to the right, and everything was about the desktop application. So there were productivity applications like Word, Excel, those types of things, and there was entertainment applications as well, all designed for that client server or client-client environment. Um, the functionality on those applications was really, really high, but the, the reach was really not high because you had to install them on every desktop, you know, either through a, a script or they had to be installed individually. So they really didn't have that reach and that collaborative um, opportunity. When the internet came into uh, fruition and it became really, really popular, Everybody jumped off the bandwagon of desktop applications and looked at the rich or the reach, sorry, of browser-based applications. So they sacrificed the richness and the content that they could provide in a desktop application and went more for the reach of the web. So they were forced into the HTML type applications and uh, they really took advantage of the spread 
But now we're in a different situation today in that that reach is great, but it's really almost come to its cap in that the ability to reach any user is there, but the experience that those users have is really, really limited. Uh, HTML and other technologies used for development certainly have their limitations. So a lot of companies are looking at rich internet applications and looking at how to take that functionality that they had in the desktop world and bring that, mesh it nicely with the reach of the web and that's where they are today. So we'll, uh, we'll look at the environment for rich internet applications and why that's, why that's really prevalent now. So the first step is looking at uh, the number one reason that this is available now is, is really the users are there. The internet has become so prevalent, everybody has access to a computer in some way, shape, or form, mostly. And the access that they do have is really thick bandwidth. They can access more powerful computers. The desktops that are available today are incredibly powerful and they're able to take on some of the load of the application processing because of that. So bandwidth, which used to be quite expensive, uh, has become really, really available in most countries and the speed of that bandwidth that's available is much higher. So you can push out that rich content without having concerns about it not being accessible to all users. When we look at the environment again, another key factor here is client expectations. Five years ago, an HTML website is exactly what clients expected. They went on the web, they went, oh yes, this is an experience I know I'm used to and I'm comfortable with. Today, the environment really has changed. You know, with YouTube, with Flickr, with Google Maps, people have a different level of expectation when they arrive at your site. So when they get there, they, they expect this type of rich content and these types of uh, search functions that a rich internet application delivers. Also, if we look at competition, that's a main factor. If your competitors are doing something really rich, people are going to arrive at your site and go, not quite the same experience. Uh, so something to keep in mind as well. And all of this really has come into play because the developer tools are here. In, in several years ago, if you wanted to develop a rich internet application, it was not simple to do. And now the tools, and we'll get into a little bit of information about the tools and technology, they're here and they're not difficult to use. So there's a very um, easy migration plan for people who are doing application or web development today to take those tools and to build something really interesting. So let's look a little bit about you know, why have applications stayed on the desktop? If we've got this great environment uh, for rich internet applications, what are the benefits of the desktop? Uh, if we look at them, really the number one benefit is that immersive content that the desktop can provide you have so much access to space and to, uh, to processing power that you can put really expressive visual elements into your applications. The other element that's really key is the, the need or the opportunity to use um, vast quantities of data. On the web, data is great, but it's difficult to present and, and manipulate large quantities of it in an HTML type application as well the need for local storage. If you've got content that's very confidential or that requires access control, that's been something that's typically stayed on the desktop because it can get a little bit complex in some cases to bring that online. Um, as well as the business case, if you think about it, people have been selling box software and box content today for ages and they really understand how to do that. So when you get into models of subscription-based content or uh, service-based offerings, it becomes a little challenging for some people to re-engineer what their process and their business model is. But you also want to look at desktop applications and the flip side of them is they tend to be really expensive to deploy. So getting that application out to every user can be really challenging from a technical perspective and really difficult if you need to upgrade that user. Um, Collecting data can also be a challenge, just being able to feed data into an application and push it back out to some central server can be difficult. And there's compatibility and installation nightmares with desktops because of the number of different operating systems, the type of other software it may have to interact with. 
you have to do really bulletproof QA in order to have a, a strong desktop application. Um, so then applications that were typically on the desktop tried to go onto the web and uh, it ran into some challenges there as well. I mean, the, the HTML website formula works really well because it's low cost to deploy and it's really easy to maintain and users have immediate access to the latest and greatest version of your content, but there's some challenges as well. I mean, you can collect data very easily on an HTML site and you can share data very easily but you're really locked into a page-driven content model. So if your application doesn't fit that, that's going to be a challenge. As well, taking, an taking information and interacting with users can be challenging when the only real way of interaction is through forms. Uh, not every piece of data is best collected in that format. And when we were talking before about uh, the bandwidth limitations that existed previously, HTML is really a big hog on bandwidth because of the fact that it tends to require a lot of reloads in order to uh, process content. We'll get into the details of that later, but it does take up quite a bit of bandwidth. Uh, the other thing that uh, you'll want to look at is even though there's technologies that have come out today and, and processes for helping to bridge the inconsistencies across browsers, things like cascading style sheets, they work quite nicely, but they still do create a different experience for users with different systems. If you've ever looked at a page on a Mac and a Safari and then looked at the same page on a PC in, uh, for example, Internet Explorer 5, a, lot, a little bit of an older software, the experience is going to be quite different. So that's something that you have to bridge when you're doing an HTML application. 